We've already used UI Navigation Controller in previous projects to provide a core user interface that lets us control which screen is currently visible. Another fundamental UI component is the tab bar, which you'll see in apps such as the App Store, Music, and Photos. It lets the user control which screen they want to view by tapping on what interests them. Our current app has a single empty view controller. It's the default Xcode template. But we're going to jazz that up with a table view controller, a navigation controller, and a tab bar controller so you can see how they all work together. Now, hopefully by now you should know the drill or at least part of it. We'll start by opening viewcontroller.swift and changing this class so it inherits from UI table view controller. Now open main.storyboard. We'll delete that initial view controller and replace it with a table view controller. Make sure you use the identity inspector change its class from UI table view controller to be view controller. Then check the box marked is initial view controller. We have this one prototype cell here, please select that. Then change its style from custom to subtitle. This shows text above and below in two lines. While we're here, we'll give this thing an identifier. We'll say it is a cell and it has the accessory type disclosure indicator. Now for the interesting part. We need to wrap this view controller inside two other things. First, a navigation controller, then a tab bar controller. So I'll go to the editor menu and choose embed in and then navigation controller. And there we have our standard navigation controller embedding. But immediately after that, I'll go to editor embed in tab bar controller. So we have a tab bar controller, then a navigation controller, then our view controller. And now you can see we have this gray bar at the top and a gray bar at the bottom for our tab bar controller. Go ahead and press command R now to build and run the code exactly as it is. Just launch in simulator and see how it looks so far. So now you can see we have our nav control at the top here, this navigation bar, this gray thing plus an empty table view with some lines for separators, plus our tab bar controller at the bottom, that's where it says the word item. Now behind the scenes, UI tab bar controller manages an array of view controllers the user can choose from. You can often do most of the work inside Interface Builder, but not in this project, as you'll see. We're going to use one tab to show recent petitions, and another to show popular petitions, which is the same thing really, all it's changing is the data source. Doing everything inside the storyboard would mean duplicating our view controllers, which is a bad idea. So instead, we're just going to design one of them in the storyboard, then create a duplicate of it using code. Back in Interface Builder again, I showed you already we have this sort of preview gray bar at the top here, plus a gray bar at the bottom. This is showing us it's inside a simulated navigation controller with navigation bar, and inside a simulated tab bar controller with its tab bar at the bottom. Now this gray bar here is just showing us a space for the tab bar at the bottom of the screen. But over to the left, you'll see our navigation controller, the thing that's actually inside the tab bar controller. This thing here has a blue square with the word item below. And if you choose that, it'll light up blue like this. And we select item in the side here in the document outline. That is our tab bar item, which is the icon and text used to represent a view controller in the tab bar. Now you see it's set to have a system item of custom right now, but we can also have some built-in system types down here. For example, we might choose most recent as a default. And that's great here, so we'll be showing new petitions from the White House API in this tab. So having the most recent system item in there will look great. It means Apple will adapt the UI's icon to whatever fits the local language, and also most recent will change to match whichever language the user has selected. Now, one important thing about UI tab bar item is that when you set its system item, it assigns both an icon and some text for the title of the tab. If we try and change this title to something custom, let's say uh, petitions here, we'll lose a default system icon. Let's provide our own instead. This is because Apple has trained users to associate certain icons with certain information, and they don't really want us using those icons incorrectly. So I'll go back to most recent again. And before we're done, I'll make one last change to our storyboard. First, I'll select the navigation controller itself, 
Then go to the Identity Inspector. This is where we have the class of things being used. I'm going to change its storyboard ID to be nav controller. This is like the cell reuse identifier we have for our table view cells. It lets us identify this view controller in code. So we're done with IB for now. Please open viewcontroller.swift so we can make the usual changes to get us a working table view. First, we'll add a property to store our table view items. I'll say var partitions equals an array of strings. Then we'll add number of rows in section, number of rows in section. Uh, there are as many rows as we have partitions. So we'll say return partitions.count. Then we'll have cell for row at, cell for row at. And we'll do the usual thing. Uh, let cell equals table view dot DQ, reusable cell with identifier four. Identifier is cell, four will be the index path. But this time, we're going to set both the text label of the cell and the detail text label, so the top and bottom label. So I'll say cell.text label, question mark dot text, equals title goes here, and cell.detail text label, that's the label below, question mark dot text equals subtitle goes here, and finally, return cell. Now, we could build and run this code if you want to, but there's no point realistically. Partitions array is still empty, so nothing will actually have changed. All we'll see is most recent inside the tab bar controller. Anyway, step one is now complete. We have a basic user interface in place, and we're ready to proceed with some new code.